So in this video, I'm going to show you a very powerful library that will help you to visualize the real time status of all the GPIO pins of your ESP board using the web browser on your smartphone, tablet or a computer that will help you to debug a lot of your projects quite easily. So this will be a very short but really useful video. So let us quickly start with how to install the necessary library and how to use the built in example code. So now to get started with this GPI viewer, you need to do a couple of steps and one of them is you need to have the latest ESP32 boards a package already installed on your Arduino ID. In my case, I have updated to the latest version 2.0.14. The second step is you need to get the GPI viewer library, which you can get it from this page. I'll be leaving away its link in the description. After that, you just need to click on the download zip button to download this file. After downloading this, you also need to download more library called as ESP async web server. So I'll click here and here also you need to download the zip file of this library. So after downloading both the libraries, you can go to Arduino, then to sketch into include library and into add zip library. Here you just need to go to your downloads folder where you have downloaded the library. So I'll quickly navigate to that. And here are both the libraries. So first I'll install the GPI viewer library. So it's successfully added. And after that, I'll repeat this step to install the ESP async web server library. So both the libraries are added, but we need to add one more library, which is mentioned in the official GitHub page, which is async TCP. Okay. So you can go to Arduino sketch into include library into manage libraries this time. And here you can search for async TCP and then you need to install this library. In my case, I installed the version 1.1.4. So these were all the mandatory steps you need to follow to get started with this GPI viewer library. And now you're good to go to upload the first example code. For that, you can go to files, examples, and just scroll down to GPI viewer. And we have only one example code. So we'll open up quickly. And here in this example code, we need to provide the SID name and password because everything will be connected to the local internet network and we'll be able to visualize all the GPI pins and, uh, using a web page. So I'll Provide the same name and password of my Wi-Fi router here. After that, I'll select the right board and COM port, which is already selected. So currently I'm using the ESP32 Do It Dave Kid V1 board. And here I'll straight away hit the upload button. This is a basic GPI viewer example code in which we we have nothing to do here. We the loop is empty and the setup part is only and only for GPI viewer library and nothing else. So let's just see by default, like if we upload a blank sketch, by default, which pins are turned high and which pins are turned low. Let us visualize that. Okay, so here the code got successfully uploaded. So now I'll open the serial monitor and let me just reset this board. It says connecting to Wi-Fi. It got connected. It also got its own local IP address using which we can visualize the pinout. So let me just turn on the screen recording on my smartphone now. Okay, so here my smartphone is connected with the same Wi-Fi router on which this ESP board is connected. Now I can just enter the IP address shown in the serial monitor, which is 192.168.0.116 colon 8080. Okay, so we get to see this web page on the smartphone and here we can change the view like we can uh, click here here and we can go to like generic view in which we can see the generic ESP 826 or ESP32 chipset. We can go to uh, this option and select any of the board that we are using. So in my case, I'm using the ESP32, a 30 pins variant. So I can select this and this is a perfect board for my demo. Okay. So here now we can see one interesting data like by uploading a blank sketch of Arduino ID, the GPI 22 and 23 are by default in low state. The RX TX pin are by default in high state. The D5 is in high state. D15 is in high and the D14 is in high state. So these are the default state of all the pins, even though we haven't utilized any of the GPIO pins in our code. And now uh, let us try to manually change the state of the pin to see how, uh, how fast we are getting the data. So by default, uh, the sampling interval is set to 100 milliseconds. So let's just try it out. So I will connect the wire to ground pin and let's just turn on the GPIO DeFi. So DeFi is currently in high state. So I will connect the DeFi to ground and let's see. Okay, so DeFi state is set to ground. And if I remove it, it got high again. Just focus on DeFi only because all other pin state got changed because I touched those pins. Okay, as you can see, when I'm touching the pins, the states are getting changed. Okay, uh, because of capacitance. Now let's focus on DeFi. So yeah, the latency is pretty very low. So it's completely real time. I'm able to visualize the data in real time for the DeFi. So after that example code, we get to learn how to use this library. But will this library work with our existing IoT project codes? Well, it's a great question. Well, the answer is definitely yes. And now let me show you how to integrate this GPI viewer library with your code that uses the Wi-Fi in it. 
So now for the Wi-Fi demo, I use the example code of Blink IoT in which I have added all the template ID and template name and all the Blink configurations basically. And for the GPIO viewer, I just added three lines, not four. And those are first of all the necessary library and this particular line. After that, uh, previously we were adding a line to connect the ESP32 board using the GPIO library to our Wi-Fi router. But in case of IoT projects, we already make sure that our device is connected with the router so that it can get the internet connectivity. So we don't need to write that line once again to make the connectivity with the Wi-Fi router. So as you can see, I haven't provided that line for connecting with the Wi-Fi. I just added the last line, which is GPIO viewer dot begin. And that's pretty much it. The whole code is exactly the same that we have for the regular Blink example code. So here I'm just controlling the virtual pin V2. And with the help of the V2 data, I'm controlling the pin uh, GPIO2 of my ESP32. I already uploaded the code. I'll open the serial monitor and let's just press the reset button to visualize everything. Okay, it says Blink got connected successfully, uh, which is shown here. And it shows GPIO viewer is also connected successfully, means both the libraries are working without any clashes in between. And on my smartphone, I get to see the ESP32 a board with the, all the GPIO pins and as currently the D2 pin shows the status zero. Now let's just open the Blink uh, dashboard and here is the dashboard of my Blink. I'll turn on the pin and as you can see the D2 pin turned on automatically and this uh, uh, what we can say G LED built in LED of ESP32 also got turned on. If I turn off this button the D2 status is low on our GPIO viewer and the LED is also turned off. So it's completely real time and it works with the existing with your existing IoT project code as well and the demo is front of your eyes. So that's how with just three lines of code you can integrate this GPIO viewer into your existing IoT projects and not only the digital pins but you can also visualize the PWM signals. For example, here I uploaded the demo code for LED fading on the GPIO2 and I can visualize the PWM values in the web browser in real time. So it works with PWM and on the GitHub repository, it also says that it works with the analog pins, but I personally was not able to get the analog sensors reading data onto the web browser using the GPIO viewer, but it just me or maybe I missed out some step or process to be followed. So why don't you try out this GPIO viewer library and let me know if the analog reading works in your case or not. Do let me know your response down in the comments of the video. And yeah, that was it about this small but really useful video. I hope you liked it. I hope you got to learn something new from it. Do hit the like button if the answer is yes. And yeah, that being said, and I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video. Until then, explore, learn, share with me. Take care, SMS.